Hello everyone and welcome to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. Now to get the obvious question out of the way, do I recommend that you attempt to use Realism Overhaul in 1.7.3? No, but you can. <laughs> you can certainly try, um, especially if you know how to install mods manually as opposed to using CCAN and all. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit finicky and really only useful if you want to do very specific things because 1.6.1 is pretty good. 1.6.1 is pretty good. In this case, what I wanted to do was to test out RSS Visual Enhancement 64K, or RVE 64K actually, uh, by Ping or Pete. Now, that's in alpha 0.1 uh, condition, which means full of bugs and things not looking quite right. But it has some nice stuff going on once you get to orbit. So we'll see that in action. If you're not interested in doing stuff specifically in lower Earth orbit and sticking there, then it's probably not for you, especially if you also don't have much RAM. I'm saying at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've got 32. So keep that in mind and frame rates will be laggy. Otherwise, there is another mod that I was trying out and I initially tried all this out during Twitch live streams, but I want to get a YouTube record of the situation. And the other mod is Textures Unlimited Recolor, was it Recolor? Yeah, Recolor Depot. Uh, unfortunate acronym TURD, but uh, Textures Unlimited Recolor Depot allows you to use the Textures Unlimited Recoloring GUI, which some of you might be familiar with from SSTU, and use that on the stock textures. Uh, so the stock parts here, you can see this space plane on the right is completely composed of stock parts except for the engine and the RCS thrusters. The engine is a Merlin vacuum. Uh, so that's all stock parts there and they have been recolored using this. So if we select that we can see brown, I guess that's brown, blue and so forth. So that's pretty fancy. It looks better in the VAB than outside to be honest but uh, I'll certainly take it. So yeah uh, uh, so this is the stock parts and then over here we have OPT parts. Uh, it also has uh, recoloring for Mark II expansion, Mark III expansion, and OPT space plane. So I've used those OPT space plane parts and we've got an F1 engine and some RS-27s uh, ready for when we need to turn the F1 engine off. So obviously there's still realism overhaul, there's filled with kerosene and oxygen and all that business. I really ought to put wings on the penguin side of this, that's the carrier plane. It looks like a penguin to me, it's currently flightless. But uh, yeah, for now, have not done that. Uh, it's also got very optimistic dry mass there. <laughs> let's, not, let, let's not talk about that. It's a, it's a very optimistic sort of system right now. Okay, I've called it SR-73 because, well, it sort of reminded me of the SR-71 with the black textures and all. And I went with that. So uh, let's take it outside and see how it works. This is not a serious system. I just did it during the Twitch live stream to test out this recoloring GUI mainly. And I had previously tested these 64K textures and found that they worked with an asterisk. The asterisk is that the stuff I really want it to work with seems to have problems in 1.7.3, especially the space shuttle. The space shuttle, you know, of course, if you're going to have really nice high resolution, low Earth orbit textures, what you'd like to do is shuttle missions, right? I mean, obviously. But for some reason, the shuttle keeps having disappearing parts and weird graphical glitches. This is the DEQ shuttle that I use in 1.3.1. Keeps having issues in 1.7.3. And I've heard that it also has issues in 1.6.1. So, yeah, maybe... I don't know, I, I doubt I can fix that, so and it's a little bit sad that we can't get really beautiful shuttle missions uh, working. But anyway, you'll see how things have shaped up. Uh, you can see how it is here. I've got uh, post-processing, that's KS3P active as well with the, the um, RSS visual enhancements. RVE 64K has uh, configuration for KS3P, so. There's probably going to be lag because of all this visual stuff, we'll see. Ignition. You'll notice I'm not igniting the Merlin vacuum yet. And I'm just going to execute this right now. Because it's better at holding it. 
than SAS's. And I have to turn off the F1 engine pretty soon. And hopefully it's not going to flip around a whole lot when I do. But getting the balance right on this is finicky as you can tell by the tilt on the RS-27s. If I ran the Merlin vacuum it would be less finicky but I'm not cross feeding fuel into here. So, and the thrust weight ratio on the ground is already 2.2 and we're already at 3 right now. There's these interesting waves that occur, shock waves on the clouds. I assume that's intentional. The clouds are sort of masking the fact that the terrain is a little bit iffy right now as I get ready to shut off the F1 engine here. Can it hold it? Can it hold it? Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Please. Eek. It might do a flip. It might do a flip. <sighs> Don't worry, we'll still have enough for orbit, I think. So yeah, um, the ground texture is a little bit iffy until we get to 160 kilometers. Then it looks all right. Then it looks really good. Having tried to tweak uh, environmental visual enhancements and this sort of thing before, I can tell you that it's a pain in the rear end. So if you try this sort of thing out and it doesn't look right to you, um, don't bug anybody, <laughs> basically. Uh, trust me, it's, it's uh, the kind of thing that makes people lose their hair. If you have any problems at all, that's just on you. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. So, as far as the ground textures here, uh, they're basically covered in the city texture, and it's uh, tough to see because of the clouds that are complicating things, but basically it's all city all the time, and that's what's weird about it. But once we get to 160 kilometers, it'll change. Now, you can sort of see in the distance there. See, uh, they're all glittery, repeating city texture? Yeah. That's just how it is right now. Alpha 0.1, okay. Okay, now it's gotten fixed, and now you can see how it sort of really looks like. Okay, let me ignite the Merlin. Ooh. I think the Merlin, for some reason, has, like, stock sound and plume. Whoa, that's a lot of kick. And I don't know why, because I thought KK Launcher's pack had a RO config by now. But anyway... That's the situation. I had made a configuration for it, but I thought they had officially made one. So you can see that uh, compared to regular real solar system, the coastline is much better defined. The cloud textures are certainly better. Sort of a streak there, as if an uh, airliner went across. But we'll only really see the benefit once we get to the opposite coast across the Atlantic. This doesn't carry any cargo, it's just a crew vessel, obviously. No docking port right now, so a little bit inconvenient. But like I said, I just quickly slapped it together. Looking good. There have been a lot of other ways to repaint your vessels in Kerbal Space Program, but I think uh, this is the most effective. I'm sure people have noticed this particular mod way before I got to it. I think it was originally posted in April of last year, so I'm sure people have been making full use of it for quite a while. It's just that now I know about it. <laughs> finally, finally, it has come across my attention. One thing I will say is it's uh, certainly a lot bluer than I thought it would be, the, the ocean. It's usually a little bit of a fuzzier blue, a lighter blue, hazier. I might try to fix that, but every time I've tried to fix things with these visual mods, I've just made things worse. Now, the engine is unprotected. As you can see, there's no body flap there, but uh, I think it's got pretty good skin max operational temperature. I didn't set that. That's just how it is. So um, I think uh, previous testing indicated that it would survive. So we're going with that. It only has three more ignitions after this, so basically I just wanted to do a deorbit burn. Otherwise, we have a fair amount of delta V with it, 
if we wanted to use it to like do two rendezvous burns with a uh, space station, it could do that. Very choppy during time warp, unfortunately. And even when we come out of time warp, it's sort of yellow on the... Let me just turn that off. Yep, uh, still yellow on the clock, so not great. But I can take a look at the coastline of Africa. This is right here. And that's a whole lot better than with lesser textures, obviously. Very distinct islands. If you want to do cinematics, you know. Sure wish I could use the shuttle in here. I mean, it's like, oh, we've got these nice textures. Oh, the shuttle disappears on me. Ooh, sudden glare sometimes, though, with the sun. Uh, uh, that's before it reassesses things, recalculates, you see, like, there. Uh, you can get some serious glare going. But yeah, that's a pretty nice landscape. Don't know about the nighttime side though. It's a little bit glittery with the city lights. And here we see it's choppy, but again, uh, not only is the game running right now, but of course I'm recording. And let me check. Uh, yeah, uh, my recording software is using more of my CPU than the game is, so that's good enough. We'll bring it straight back down, but well, maybe we should go over a few locations first. Let's see what the sunset looks like as we've got sort of a barbecue roll going, accidental barbecue roll. Actually the lights here don't look too bad right now. Definitely uh, sunrise and sunset look spectacular. And we've got little city lights going. Tends to be a lot of thunderstorms. You can see the lightning. I mean, I'm still in time warp though. I don't know about having city lights in this region of Australia, though. Maybe forest fires, but... Or fires in general. But this is what the city lights look um, like in low Earth orbit right now. Going to high orbit and coming back, there are some visual issues. So, again, mostly it's a low orbit deal. Even the map view is sort of shiny. But the moon is looking alright right now. It's mostly down to fixing things that have clouds and the moon doesn't have that problem. But if we take a look at Venus. Venus ought to have clouds. Uh, unfortunately right now it's just got its ground texture the clouds aren't operating so that that's the complication okay retro burn oh I've got to fix that okay we've got to a decent periapsis let's see what coming back through the atmosphere looks like oh and dawn hopefully Okay, we've got dawn approaching. We're not quite near the atmosphere yet. So that's dawn. Certainly looks good. Somebody already suggested that I should use better time warp, and I'll consider it, but for now, this is all just testing and without a operant shuttle I don't know how much I'll be using this particular install as good as it looks right now we'll see so we're breaking below that uh, line, the 166 kilometer line and now things don't look quite so spiffy 
in the initial test, I actually had um, way too much MMH. So the balance of this has changed since that first test where it did successfully land, albeit in the wrong location. This time the balance is different, so I don't know how it will react. It may get destroyed and we will lose Jebenville. So there is suspense. That time it also actually ran out of RCS but was able to hold itself uh, at a decent pitch with just the aerodynamic controls by that point. We're approaching Baja, California. And again at these levels uh, it's not quite as distinct as it is from above 160 kilometers so that's just how it is right now. I didn't notice this the uh, previous time I tested this, this whole um, clouds right over all the cities. But that's uh, that's definitely what's happening right now. Interesting. Or at least the city textures. I don't know if there are supposed to be so many cities around here, but you can sort of see the crosshatch of uh, roadways underneath the clouds. And uh, we're probably going to overshoot Florida at our current rate. I wonder how much roll we can manage here. Oh, uh, no, that was probably a bad idea. Uh, uh, can it do it? For those wondering why I don't do S turns. <laughs> okay, taking manual control is not a good idea. It was actually reasonably well behaved before I decided to try and roll it. Ah, Wait, what exploded exactly? I think it was the landing gear. Uh, it's still very, very, very twitchy. This is where I need atmospheric autopilot. So let's just F3, lots of G-forces. Something failed due to aerodynamic stress. It doesn't actually say what. Hmm. Curious. Oh, it's it's the front uh, wing strake on the right side. The right side wing strake was what exploded. There we go. Okay, I get the feeling that this probably has a pretty high stall speed, though it's pretty light mass-wise. 15.76 tons. It's got the nice big stock wings. Not tweak scale, by the way. When I put this together, I didn't have tweak scale in the install. Ooh, 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 oh! Ah, buoyancy. <laughs> All right. Well, they splash down, and we have conducted our visual experiment with these mods. The plane sure looks good. Yep. I like this. I like recoloring, and I hope that the implementation in, say, KSP2 is as good as SSTU and Textures Unlimited and all have in this version. But, yep, I, I might even use uh, the sock parts more now that I have some recoloring, because I never liked the gray texture. I know people have a fan, uh, like the stock alike thing. I, I really don't. But, uh, well, if I can. Uh, modify it to my liking, I might do that. So, oh, I think I lost uh, Elevons on the right wing there. Well, anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.